Hey guys, so this video is long overdue, but I am finally bringing out a breach guide. This isn't going to be a how to play the mode sort of video, it's more of a tips and tricks video while going over some of the basics. This isn't the kind of content I would usually make, but if you'd like to see more things like this then let me know by dropping a sub and all that good stuff. With that, let's get into it. This might seem obvious to some, but ramparts are incredibly important for both sides. Most maps give the attackers a bit of an advantage when it comes to taking these, some just a little bit more than others, <coughs> so they have even more of a reason to push the ramparts. Either way, ramparts help both sides big time. Check out the difference for the attackers when they hold no ramparts versus when they hold all of them. Defenders holding the ramparts means that attacking pikemen will spend much less time near the ram and attackers holding ramparts means that defending pikemen will have a much harder time attacking the ram. For both sides, three pikemen and one officer will spawn in quick succession at the beginning. Then, for each one that dies, there will be a small cooldown before another will spawn. It will have to make its way over from the spawn point to the furthest rampart, but it will get there. Defenders might not be able to take the ramparts back, but one thing they can do is keep killing archers when they respawn. It's not crucial, but it can make a bit of a difference if you keep to it. Even though the ramparts are obviously very important, if you're in a situation where you're the only person alive, the rest of your team is currently respawning, sometimes it might actually be worth just waiting for the team to respawn. Odds are, unless you're particularly good and confident in your abilities, that charging in will probably just lead to your death again and forcing your team to be outnumbered for even longer. Just something to think about. The speed of the ram can be changed just like capturing ramparts faster. When there are attacking and defending pikemen nearby, only attacking pikemen or only attacking players, the ram will move at normal speed. When there are only attacking pikemen and attacking players, it will speed up. When there are no attackers nearby, the ram will stop. Once the ram has reached the gate, it will hit the gate every 40 seconds if there is a constant attacking of presence around it. It only takes 12 seconds, however, when being boosted. One thing that a lot of people don't seem to know is that you can actually damage the ram using feats and the ballista. Wouldn't really recommend using the ballista since it does basically pikeman levels of damage, but some feats can actually do some major damage to the ram. The only feats that really work are the AoE damaging feats, so your grenades, bombs, arrow strikes, stuff like that. Another thing to remember is that the damage of your feats is affected by damage buffs. So one combo that is ridiculously strong is Fury and Spear Storm. Here's a clip of it in action, just look at how much damage it does. The cauldron deals a small chunk of damage to the ram and any attackers that stand in the area of effect, both pikemen and players. It takes 12 uses to destroy the ram, although realistically it will take less as pikemen are most likely going to have damaged it a bit. 
it takes five seconds to actually use the cauldron and then it has a 30 second cooldown before it is usable again. It is also possible to hit the ram with the cauldron before it actually reaches the gate as demonstrated here. The Guardian is essentially a mini commander which gives a variety of buffs to the team that kills him. He'll spawn 2 minutes and 30 seconds after reaching phase 2 and also takes this long to respawn after being killed. There are a couple things to note. You don't actually have to be involved in killing the Guardian to get the buff. So if the enemy team comes to try to stop your team from killing him, you can keep some distance to intercept. You just need to stay within the radius which is fairly big. And then when he dies, you will still receive the buff without actually laying a finger on him. Also, the last hit is all that matters. So if there's a big fight happening around the Guardian, damage over time feats can really help in getting the last hit. And please, for the love of God, do not try to solo the Guardian. Yes, it's doable, but you will put your team at such a massive disadvantage for so long. And for what? for one person to get a negligible buff. It is also much more likely to be stolen if one person is going at it, because the enemy team will most likely realise that somebody is missing. The Guardian buff itself gives a full shield and fully heals, as well as giving the people that have the buff the ability to one-shot pikemen. It also gives a very brief duration of revenge when it first is grabbed. On top of this, you also take 50% less damage from Pikeman. This lasts 2 minutes, and you'll know when it's ran out because you will lose the glowing blue eyes effect on your character. The shield that you get from the buff though actually lasts until it is destroyed. There are a few boosts that can be picked up to help you in Breach. One increases your attack damage, one gives you a shield, and the other increases your movement speed. They are visible before they spawn, but they won't actually appear until 45 seconds into each phase. After they're picked up, they take 3 minutes to respawn. The attack buff and the shield buff appear in every phase, but the speed buff changes between maps. The banner gives a small shield to the ram or the gate, depending on where it's placed. This will allow either the gate to take one extra hit from the ram, or the ram to take one extra hit from the cauldron. When placing the banner, it will give the person that places it a small amount of renown. Banners can actually be stacked as well, making it even harder for the enemy to complete their objective. The banner will spawn three minutes into the first and second phase. Obviously there's no gate in the third phase, so it will not be spawning there. And then takes four minutes to respawn after it's been placed. It's a very good idea to watch the time of the match as this allows you to set up early to grab the banner as soon as it spawns. This can be the difference between getting it and losing it. A lot of people will see the ballista and think, oh that hits hard, let's just sit on it. When in reality that can seriously hamper a team's ability to push. Not only does it do full friendly fire damage, but it also means you have one less body pushing the rampart. However, the ballistas that appear in the final phase are very useful. Commanders take reduced damage from all feats, but ballistas do the full 60 damage per shot. Even getting just a few off can make all the difference. They can be useful for defenders in this phase too, but it's typically the attackers that benefit the most. The commander is pretty unpredictable in his behaviour. Sometimes he'll repeat a move five times in a row, others he'll do a mixture of everything. By now most people know what he can do, but here's a quick rundown anyway. He has a two hit chain, where the second hit is unblockable. He has a single light attack. A very slow but hard hitting top heavy, which is unblockable and also knocks players down which does actually include the defenders as well. And he also has a 3 hit spinning move similar to Highlander's zone attack, which is unblockable. 
but one thing to note about it is that the hitbox is extremely off compared to what the animation would suggest. There are a few things to note about the commander which can make the difference between winning and losing. He will prioritize pikemen over players, so if you're surrounded by pikemen it should let you get in relatively free damage. However, there is a bug where if he throws his light attack at a minion, but it hits a player instead, it will lose 60 damage. This has been in the game, I believe, since the mode launched, but regardless, a very long time. How crazy is that? But as I said, with this pikeman around him, it should make it easier for you to get some free damage in. For defenders, support feats work on him, and officers too, so you can heal him, shield him, all that good stuff. The commander will do everything he can to avoid AoE feats that damage, even friendly ones. This can be used by the attackers to stop him from attacking as while he's trying to get out of the damage, he won't attack at all. Feats like Corruption, Fire Flask and Caltrops are very good for this, as it essentially stops him from being able to defend himself. It's well known at this point that Heavies have by far the best perks in the game, and this remains true in Breach as well if not more so. Bastion, Vengeful Barrier, Bull Cup and Last Stand all help to stay alive which is useful for both sides but even more so for defenders. Defenders can actually win without really winning any fights if they can just keep one person alive and on the rampart. Granted that is very unlikely but still possible. This is because it only takes one person to contest the ramparts so if they can stay alive the rest can work on respawning, contesting the ram, using the cauldron, all that good stuff. And that is where the heavy perks can really make the difference. Bastion in particular is extremely useful, as it gives a small defense buff on objectives, which Breach is actually full of. The ramparts, healing zone, and even the ram count as objective areas, so it can be active for a big chunk of time within the game. Doing the wrong thing together can sometimes have a better result than trying to do things separately. This obviously mainly applies for solo queue, but for example, if a couple of attackers have decided to ignore the ramparts and just go ham pushing the ram, the other two could see this and go, okay, instead, we'll focus on making sure the cauldron doesn't get used. This way, the ram might actually get boosted through the gate before too many cauldrons get dropped. It's not a great strat, but it can definitely be made to work, especially by organized teams. Warmonger makes life for the attackers so much easier due to her feats. If an attacking team reaches the commander with a warmonger on the team, it is pretty much GG, game over. But she can also be useful for defenders as she thrives on enemy teams grouping up, which will typically happen in Breach, and will make it very difficult for attackers to actually get near the commander. Shaolin has the ability to teleport on his tier 4, but he can use this while holding the banner, which is particularly useful for defenders. Some feats are particularly useful for the final phase. For example, Hitakiri's tier 4, Aramusha with a combination of Juggernaut and Fear itself, and Spearstorm are some of the most powerful at dealing with the commander whereas healing and shielding feats are especially useful for defenders. Attackers can actually stop the cauldron from being used or interrupt it being used by throwing bombs at the wall. That may sound strange, but here it is in action. And there you have it. I hope you found this video at least a little bit helpful. I know a lot of this could be considered common knowledge, but there is actually a lot of people that don't know some of this stuff. And with Breach being an absolute bot fest lately, maybe some people will be able to take some of this stuff on board and decide not to leave games. You know who you are, you losers. Ah, who am I kidding? They don't have the attention span to reach this far into the video anyway. For the absolute legends that made it to the end, Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I don't often upload to YouTube, but I do stream on Twitch on a regular basis, so hopefully I'll see you over there. But until next time...
Have a good one.